something, but that's, this is my, my, that your vision makes sense or your picture makes sense. <clears throat> Good morning and welcome to morning prayer for December 16th. Today, we commemorate the lives of Ralph Adams Cram, Richard Upjohn, and John Lafarge. They contributed to the life, the spiritual life of folks during the 18th or the 19th and the 20th century through architecture and art. Cram uh, was a prolific and influential American architect of collegiate and ecclesiastical buildings, uh, often in the Gothic style. Um, he became a uh, Anglo-Catholic in 1887 and that experience uh, affected his work for the rest of his life. He was a leading proponent of disciplined Gothic revival architecture. Uh, and is closely associated with Princeton, where he was awarded a doctorate of letters and served as the supervising architect from 1907 to 1929. Through the 1920s, Cram was a public figure and frequently mentioned in the press. Uh, the New York Times called him one of the most prominent Episcopalian laymen in the country. Richard Upjohn uh, was an English-born architect who emigrated to the United States and became most famous for his Gothic revival churches. Uh, his family initially settled in New Bedford, Massachusetts, and then moved to Boston in 1833, where he worked in architectural design. Uh, he also moved to New York City and worked on the alterations of Trinity Church. The alterations were later abandoned and he was commissioned to design a new church, which was completed in 1846. His extremely influential, influential book, Upjohn's Rural Architecture, designs working drawings and specifics for wooden church and other rural structures was published in 1852. And finally, John Lafarge was an American painter, muralist, stained glass window maker, decorator and writer. His labors, his labors is almost every type of art won for him from the French government, the, cro uh, the Cross of the Legion of Honor and membership in the Principal Artistic Societies of America, as well as the presidency of the National Society of Mural Painters from 1899 through 1904. Uh, he was very knowledgeable in languages, both ancient and modern, literature and art, and by his cultured personality and reflective conversation, he influenced many other people. Uh, through a natural, he was a natural questioner and venerated the traditions of religious art and always uh, preserved his Catholic faith and, rever faith and reverence. He experimented with color problems, especially in the medium of stained glass. He succeeded not only in rivaling the gorgeousness of medieval windows, but in adding new resources by his invention of opalescence glass and his original methods of superimposing and welding his materials. So on this day, we commemorate these three gifted artists who gave much uh, to our world in art and architecture through their expressions of faith. So we'll take a moment to center ourselves before we begin our worship. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together. O oh God, let our mouth proclaim your praise. And your glory all the day long. Praise to the holy and undivided Trinity, one God, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Amen. Let us say together the Venite. 
Come, let us sing to the Holy One. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before God's presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout with songs. For you, O oh God, are a great God. You are great above all gods. In your hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are yours also. The sea is yours for you made it and your hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before God, our maker. For you are our God and we are the people of your pasture and the sheep of your hand. Oh, that today we will hearken to your voice. Harden not your hearts as your forebears did in the wilderness at Meribah and on that day at Massa when they tempted me. They put me to the test though they had seen my works. 40 years long, I detested that generation and said, this people are wayward in their hearts. They do not know my ways. So I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. A reading from the prophet Zechariah. The angel who talked with me came again and awakened me as one is awakened from sleep. He said to me, what do you see? And I said, I see a lampstand all of gold with a bowl on the top of it. There are seven lamps on it with seven lips on each of the lamps that are on top of it. And by it are two olive trees, one on the right of the bowl and the other on its left. I said to the angel who talked with me, what are these, my Lord? The angel who talked with me answered, do you not know what these are? I said, no, my Lord. He said to me, this is the word of the Lord of Zerubbabel, Zerubbabel, not by might nor by power, but my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. What are you, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel, you shall become a plain, and he shall bring out the top stone amid shouts of grace, grace to it. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, the hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. His hand shall also complete it. Then you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me to you. For whoever has despised the day of small things shall rejoice and shall see the plummet in the hand of Zerubbabel. These seven are the eyes of the Lord, which range through the whole earth. Then I said to him, what are these two olive trees on the right and the left of the lamb stand? And a second time I said to him, what are these two branches of the olive trees, which pour out the oil through the two golden pipes? And he said to me, do you, do you not know what these are? I said, no, my Lord. Then he said, these are the two anointed ones who stand by the house of the whole earth. Hear what the spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. The God of gods has spoken. God has called the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion, perfect in its beauty, God is revealed in glory. O oh God, you will come and will not keep silence. Before you, there is a consuming flame and around about you, a raging storm. You call the heavens and the earth from above to witness the judgment of your people. Gather before me, my loyal followers, those who have made a covenant with me and sealed it with sacrifice. Let the heavens declare the rightness of your cause 
for you alone are judge. Hear, O oh, hear, O oh my people, and I will speak. O oh Israel, I will bear witness against you, for I am God, your God. I do not accuse you because of your sacrifices. Your offerings are always before me. I will take no bull calf from your stalls, nor he goats out of your pens. For all the beasts of the forest are mine, the herds in their thousands upon the hills. I know every bird in the sky and the creatures of the field are in my sight. If I were hungry, I would not tell you, for the whole world is mine and all that is in it. Do you think I eat the flesh of bulls or drink the blood of goats? Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and make good your vows to the most high. Call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you shall honor me. But to the wicked God says, why do you recite my statutes and take my covenant upon your lips? Since you refuse discipline and toss my words behind your back? When you see thieves, you make them your friends and you cast in your lot with adulterers. You have loosed your lips for evil and harnessed your tongue to a lie. You are always speaking evil of your family and slandering your own mother's child. These things you have done and I kept still and you thought that I am like you. I have made my accusation. I have put my case in order before your eyes. Consider this well, you who forgot God, lest I rend you and there be none to deliver you. Whoever offers me the sacrifice of thanksgiving and honors me, but to those who keep in my way, will I slow, will I show, the salvation of God. A reading from the book of Revelation. And whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to the one who is seated on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall before the one who is seated on the throne and worship the one who lives forever and ever. They cast their crowns before the throne, singing, are worthy, O Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will they existed and were created. Then I saw in the right hand of the one seated on the throne, a scroll written on the inside and on the back, sealed with seven seals. And I saw a mighty angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the scroll and break its seals? And no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look into it. And I began to weep bitterly because no one was found worthy to open the scroll or to look into it. Then one of the elders said to me, do not weep. See the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David has conquered so that he can open the scroll and its seven seals. Hear what the spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to Thanks God. Be to God. O oh, ruler of the universe, Lord God, great deeds, great deeds are they that you have done, surpassing human understanding. Your ways are ways of righteousness and truth, O oh, king of all the ages. Who can fail to do you homage, Lord, and sing the praises of your name? For you only are the Holy One. All nations will draw near and fall down before you because your just and holy works have been revealed. Praise to the holy and undivided Trinity, one God, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen.
A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. Then the kingdom of earth, then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight, there was a shout, look, here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, give us some of your oil for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, no, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet and the door was shut. Later, the other bridesmaids came also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. Hear what the spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God.
Hear our cry, O oh God. And listen, and listen to, our to our prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Help us, O God, our Savior. Deliver us and forgive us our sins. Look upon your congregation. Give to your people the blessing of peace. Declare your glory among the nations. And your wonders among all the peoples. Do not let the oppressed be shamed and turned away. Never forget the lives of your poor. Continue your loving kindness to those who know you. And your favor to those who are true of heart. Satisfy us, satisfy us by your loving kindness in the morning. So shall we rejoice and be glad all the days of our life. Friends, for whom and for what shall we pray today? I ask your prayers um, for a family member, Joan, and for a friend, Diane, who are experiencing a recurrence of a cancer or, or are responding to cancer in their lives. Um, may their treatments be successful and, they, and may they be restored to health. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. I ask your prayers of blessing upon our nephew Riley and his intended wife, Emma, as they will celebrate their marriage on Saturday, that God would continue to bless them and keep them and strengthen them in their marriage. And I also offer a prayer of thanksgiving for my good friend, Carol, who celebrates her birthday today for the blessing that she has been in my life for many, many years. I give thanks for Carol and for Riley and for Emma. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Ask your prayers for my Oma, that she may continue to be without pain um, as she is in her last days and weeks. I offer a prayer of thanksgiving for the safe and healthy arrival of um, uh, and delivery of Sven and the recovery of my friend Rihanna after his birth. And I offer a prayer of thanksgiving for the birthdays of Samini and Martin, um, which have been dear friends for a long time. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks. Thank you, John. John. I would like to offer up uh, a prayer of thanksgiving for the life of Ivy Goff, uh, who celebrated her first birthday um, this month, December 8th. Um, I would also like to offer up um, a prayer of tribute to um, uh, a giant of the 20th and 21st century, um, Bell Hooks, um, born Gloria Jean Watkins. Bell Hooks is a public intellectual, a writer, um, a feminist. She, her, her writings deeply influenced a generation of women and men. Um, she was able to bring about a widening of the view of feminism to encompass people of color, particularly African-American women whose lives were very different from um, the feminists most prominently mentioned at the time um, in the 70s and the 80s, her work broadened the definition of feminism and also brought into relief the 
problems that beset us today. Um, she continued the prophetic work of Martin Luther King Jr. by talking, by speaking about the need to confront a society which is dominated by greed and materialism. That is by a capitalist system that, that destroys people inward and outward, despite the good that it brings to others. That talked about a patriarchal system that demeans women of all colors, that hobbles women today, no matter what their station. That talks about imperialism that hobbles our efforts, for example, to bring vaccines to the rest of the world and help us to deal with the pandemic. And that, give, that, that deals with continuing racism. She was able to tie all of these evils together, actually, to describe the situation that we are in and its effects on its effects on our world and on our lives on an everyday level as well as a global level. She, uh, she died yesterday of end stage renal failure, but I would like to end my prayer of tribute to her by echoing her words, where she refers to Martin Luther King Jr.'s admonition to us. What is the beginning of the help for us to, to, to face this system of domination? And she said, the only power that is capable of Helping us to do this is love. Lord, in your mercy. Your honor. I ask your prayers for Reverend Rondesia and the vestry as they uh, will address the budget for next year at the vestry meeting on Sunday um, for the difficult decisions that may need to be made that they will be made in a spirit of love and hope um, and that God would guide all of us as we venture into a new year with uncertainty, but with the understanding that with God, all things are possible. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. <clears throat> The Lord be with you. And also, and also with you. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the vision of Ralph Adams Cram, John Lafarge, and Richard Upjohn, whose harmonious revival of, of the Gothic enriched our churches with a sacramental understanding of reality in the face of secular materialism. And we pray that we may honor your gifts of the beauty of holiness given through them for the glory of Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Amen. God of the present moment, God who in Jesus stills the storm and soothes the frantic heart, bring hope and courage to all who wait or work in uncertainty. Bring hope that you will make them the equal of whatever lies ahead. Bring them courage to endure what cannot be avoided, for your will is health and wholeness. You are God, and we need you. Amen. Amen. Please join me in the prayer of St. John Christostom. Almighty God, 
You have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O oh Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.